We have a very special guest that we just were able to uh, get to come and be with us uh, in the last 24 hours. Some of you may have heard of him. Some of you haven't, but he has an amazing story. Never heard a story quite like this before. His name is Mossab Hassan Yosef. And let me tell you a little bit about him. Mossab is the oldest son of Sheikh Hussan Yosef, a founding member of Hamas. And Mossab was being groomed to take over Hamas or be one of the primary leaders in it. He was involved in the Infatada and something happened that was unexpected. He was arrested by the Israelis. He was held captive in one of Israel's most feared prison facilities and there the Israelis approached him about being a spy for them to the members of Hamas. And Mossab agreed to this, uh, not a, initially planning on really spying for the Israelis, but possibly being a double agent. But while he was in prison, when he saw the mistreatment of Muslims to fellow Muslims, he began to rethink his whole position and ended up being one of Israel's most effective spies saving many, many lives, averting uh, terrorist bombings. Because of the brave choices that he made, uh, he prevented suicide bombings, he exposed terrorist cells, many lives were spared because of the courage of Mossab Hassan Yosef. And then the story takes another twist. A British cabbie shared the gospel with him and he gave his life to Jesus Christ. <laughs> There's uh, much more to the story than that, but the reason uh, we could not announce this ahead of time is there are security concerns, as you could probably well understand. For a man with his background to make a stand like he is taking, takes great courage. He's written a book called Son of Hamas that is out right now. And it is our privilege to welcome Masab Hassan Yosef to our conference. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's a privilege to be here. I'm, uh, I'm very happy to be uh, between you guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. You were raised in a, in a Muslim home uh, in Ramallah. Is that correct? Yes. And you, uh, in your book, The Son of Hamas, talk about the fact that, that Islam is like a ladder. It, a, a lot of people especially in America, don't understand Islam today. They, they don't know what to think of it, you know, because possibly the most public face of, of Islam is the terrorist and, uh, and terrorism in general. And so people don't understand the, the stages and, and the variations within uh, the Islamic faith. Maybe you could explain this latter and, and how that worked in your own life. First of all, uh, what I can say that uh, Islam is the biggest lie in the human history. And it's a perfect lie. Mm -hmm. It's a lie that Muhammad uh, lied uh, to his people and to everybody 1400 years ago. He wrapped this lie with liars of uh, facts, truths, morals, which made it a perfect lie that um, deceived the billions of people. Um, uh, now, Islam, I describe it as a ladder because it's a, a religion of works. Yeah. It's not a relationship. Uh, you do things and uh, there's a reward at the end of the day. So uh, you keep climbing this ladder. Most traditional Muslims are standing on the first rung of that ladder. And they start climbing, praying more, fasting more doing more charity, and getting closer to their God. The highest rung of that ladder is jihad. 
This is the holiest duty of a Muslim, jihad. And what, and is, jihad, jihad, what is jihad? Jihad now, they are trying, you know, um, to explain it as a struggle, but it's not struggle. Jihad means fighting, using force, using the sword for the glory of Allah. Muhammad did it himself, and Muhammad is the highest example of every Muslim. In fact, Muhammad is more important to Muslims than Allah himself. Mm. Muhammad created the personality of Allah to give him authority to do what he wanted. He couldn't say that I am Allah and worship me. So he created Allah into their minds and he made them worship this God. But simply they were worshiping him. They were doing his will. And uh, it's all about uh, Muhammad. Now Muhammad, as the highest example for Muslims, himself, he killed. He killed thousands of people. He uh, uh, cleansed entire communities, like Jewish communities, in the Arab uh, Peninsula uh, that didn't agree with him and they didn't even collaborate with him. So we're talking about a first class killer that killed people who didn't agree with him and this is the highest example for Muslims. So now when Muslims come and tell me or tell everybody that Islam is not, uh, 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 radical Islam is, is not Islam. There is no such a thing, radical Islam, because Islam is radical from the first place. Right. And uh, th th there is no need to, to divine. And what I say, that the God of Islam himself is the biggest terrorist. Mm. Instead of chasing a ghost like Bin Laden and all those small terrorists, the God of Islam, he's the responsible number, number one. He's the motivation behind all those terrorist, uh, terrorist attacks in the world. And this is the real enemy that we need uh, to be uh, fighting. Yes, you... Uh... You said in an interview with the Wall Street Journal, uh, the problem is not a Muslim, the problem is with their God. They need to be liberated from their God. He's their biggest enemy. That's pretty much what you're saying here. Yes. Now I, I, I might look uh, like uh, to Muslims that I'm taking stand uh, with the West against, against them, with America against Islam, with Israel against Islam. And I tell them, you know something, I'm taking stand to your side against your God because your God is your biggest problem. Your God has been enslaving you. Your God is sending you to death. Your God is yeah. destroying you. And imagine how dangerous that you, they bow their knees five times a day to their biggest enemy. Yeah. And they don't recognize it. Very dangerous. And the consequences to recognize, like, just to recognize this and fight against it, this means that you put in yourself a death sentence. Those are the weapons that God of Islam uses against Muslims. The demon of fear, demon of guilt, demon of shame. Even Christians in the Middle East, they see me as traitor today. I'm sorry to say that. And this hurt me very much. Um, why? Because I didn't take stance be, be, uh, toward Israel against Palestinians. I was saving human being lives, yeah. Israelis and Palestinians, and we will talk about this in, in details, but our focus should be not on Muslims, our focus should be on Islam, the ideology, the God of the Islam. This is the real uh, uh, gangster, I uh, like to describe him. And please, like, you know, r try to repeat this, like, all, all the time between your friends. We want, like, to uh, fix the dictionary of the Middle East. The dictionary is wrong, and uh, uh, Islam is not a religion of peace. Islam means submission. Salam means peace. Islam means submission. So we're talking about a religion of submission that you don't submit, you, you get killed. This is in the core of that uh, belief and that uh, faith. And, uh, and instead of uh, humans fighting humans, let's ideology fight ideology. Let's the ideology of love of forgiveness, fight with the ideology of hate and uh, uh, controlling uh, others and the, the idea of destruction, in fact. And this is what we are uh, doing today. Now, Masab, you, um, you're arrested by the Israelis. They ask you to cooperate with them and be an agent for them, a shin bet, 
as it's called, and they give you a, a name. You're called the Green Prince. What does that mean, the Green Prince? And, and what was it they were asking you to do? Um, everybody in the Shembet has a code. Uh, like, you know, here in America, FBI use numbers, but in uh, the Shembet, uh, we use codes. So it was uh, Prince because of my father's uh, position as a top leader of uh, Hamas and a top leader also uh, of uh, Palestinians. Um, and uh, green for the flag of Hamas or the color right. of Islam in general. So that was uh, why the green prince. So you were able to, to uh, go back into your community where people knew you and you were privy to behind the scenes information that you could alert the Israelis to uh, people that were potential targets that could be uh, areas that were going to be targeted, bombings and so forth, correct? Um, this is a very complicated uh, uh, w w work. It's not like an uh, uh, inform uh, informant, yes. somebody who knew about information and he went to the closest uh, phone uh, and uh, made a phone call. It's a different uh, type of job. Uh, I was in the heart of uh, Hamas, I was in the heart of Palestinian uh, Authority, in the heart of other Palestinian factions, PLO, Yasser Arafat meetings, because of my father's position. And uh, his, his position gave me lots of cover and lots of space uh, uh, to uh, move around. Now, uh, the, it was a joint effort. It wasn't my effort alone. The Shem Beit uh, had lots of information, maybe more information than what I had. But I could put information together, and uh, what didn't make sense to them, it made perfect sense to me because I'm the son of that culture, the son of that movement, of uh, that religion. So uh, I could uh, solve many puzzles that they couldn't solve. They had m lots of information, and they didn't know how to deal with this information. So my job wasn't informant. Was, my job was more complicated, yeah. and in fact, at some level, I was asked to stay away from the movement so we don't get suspicious uh, some, somehow. So it's a, it was a joint effort. Everybody, many soldiers in the field, uh, uh, technology resources, and uh, many brave uh, uh, men and uh, women also were uh, working and nobody knows about them today. They don't uh, show off. And uh, I am not in a position to say, okay, I get the glory because they cannot talk uh, uh, anything. It's, it was everybody's uh, effort, and uh, I am happy that we could stop uh, the killing of uh, many innocent people, Palestinians and uh, Israelis. Yes. Uh, you know, whenever there's a... Um, whenever there's a new president elected, they always have the plan for peace in the Middle East, and... We've seen so many of these uh, agreements signed on the White House front lawn and the people shake hands and they have their photo and, and it's broken in such a short period of time. What would you say, Massab, is at the heart of the trouble in the Middle East? What is the heart of this issue? It's, uh, f first of all, anybody who wants to solve the problem in the Middle East, they need to understand what uh, the problem first. You cannot go and uh, uh, solve uh, a problem that you don't uh, understand it. So, uh, first of all, first step, they need to understand what's going on there. Now the question, do Palestinians know what their problem is? I doubt. Do Israelis know what their problem is? I doubt. So I don't blame the American president. Um, in fact, people who are in charge in there, they're people behind the scenes, underground groups, and uh, unfortunately, I'm coming from uh, uh, there. Uh, Hamas is a very secretive, closed community under the ground. Even Hamas members don't understand what Hamas is all about. They don't know how Hamas operates. And I wrote something in Son of Hamas that even my father, a top Hamas leader, didn't understand what Ham how Hamas was operating, which everybody was shocked. So Palestinians don't know about Hamas. And the Israelis also don't know about the Shem Beit. Not every Israeli uh, g got a chance to learn how the Shem Beit uh, uh, works. Yeah. So the Israelis also were shocked with my story as the Palestinians were shocked. It right. was hard for both communities to believe. So now, 
This is why I, I had to pay a very high price to write Son of Hamas to educate public first. Now, if we can build a public opinion about what's the problem, how a child grow up in that uh, society, and what uh, type of challenges that they face, how they feel. Uh, and the, the picture, uh, I want to make also that, that the picture is not black and white, no. as we think, that Palestinians versus Israelis, those are good guys and those are bad guys. The situation is much more complicated than that. So now, if we start to understand the problem, start to feel with people on both sides, uh, we will uh, be more responsible of our decisions. And uh, uh, at, at that level, I think uh, uh, U.S. President and uh, all politicians will be able to make uh, uh, more brave uh, uh, steps toward peace in the Middle East. There can be peace. Maybe tomorrow we will hear that there is a peace process and there is an establishment of a Palestinian state, maybe. Uh, I see lots of pressure on Israel, lots of pressure on every side. But I cannot guarantee that a Palestinian state will bring peace to the Middle East. Peace starts from the heart of every individual in that region. Right. It's not about a government here and a government there. Right. And now, what I say, what I say that the problem is ideological problem. And to be honest with you, I'm sure that many people understand this, uh, uh, that this is an ideological problem, but they don't want to admit it. They don't want a religious uh, war. They don't want a war between Muslims and Christians uh, across uh, the, uh, the globe. But it is an ideological problem. And it, there has been religious uh, war uh, for the last 1400 years. Muhammad claimed that he flew from Mecca to Jerusalem on a flying donkey. <laughs> this is why, this is why Al-Aqsa Mosque is the third most important holy site for Muslims. Right. This is why. Simply, how can we solve this problem? Disapprove that this man you know, flew on a donkey to Al-Aqsa Mosque, and they will stop believing that this is a holy site anymore. Yeah. You know? Disapprove their God. You ask Muslims, for example, this is how the ideological problems, like now the fight on Temple Mount is not between Muslims and Jews. It's between the God of the Torah, who gave the promise for his people, for that exact spot, and the God of Islam, the God of the Quran, who gave his people also the promise of that exact spot. Yeah. So the war is between the God of Torah and the God of the Quran. Right. It's God's wars. It's ideological war. Right. Uh, 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 the Bible versus the Quran. Yeah. So one of them has to be right and one of them has to be wrong. Uh, uh, and they both can't be wrong, by the way. This can cause a religious uh, war. But one of them uh, has to be uh, uh, wrong. And I'm telling you that the Quran is wrong because if Muslims... And by the way, I say this to Muslims every day. <laughs> I just, I don't just say it to Christians. Um, one simple question, one simple question to Muslims. G the God of the Quran to them is God Almighty. Allah in Arabic means God Almighty. So Allah in their mind is supposed to be God, the, the perfect one who will never make a mistake. So we go to them and ask them, okay, we found uh, several mistakes in the Quran. Can your God uh, make one single mistake? They say, no, there is no way. Okay, let me show you the mistake. <laughs> no, no, we don't want to hear it. And if you force them to hear it, they turn their backs and they run. They stuff rags into their ears so they don't hear, um, simply because they don't want to face the consequences. And this was one of the main reasons that I came public with this. The worst reputation in the Middle East to, to co collaborate with Israel against your people. This is the worst reputation a man can bring to himself. And I said, is this like your biggest fear? I'm taking it. Yes, I did work for the Shem Beit. I worked for the Israelis. And I did what was right, regardless of your shame. So... Their, 
their God. First of all, we need to liberate them from their God and his weapons against them of fear, guilt, shame. Those are the worst enemies of any society, any community. You know, here, like, we do, we, we mistake, we sin. I, I'm, I'm the worst sinner. I'm the worst Christian in the world, I think. And, uh, but I live by God's grace. I never feel guilty, no matter what I do. Because of that, I am a free man. I am a free man. And this is how Jesus Christ liberated humanity from religion. No. You know, and this is... We are not... I, I don't want to dig deep into this uh, 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 philosophy now, but I think we know the difference between a relationship, the difference between a peaceful relationship between you and your Creator and being a slave to your Creator. And this is Muslims' problems. Muslims don't understand the Quran. I want to uh, uh, explain this uh, a little. Excuse me, I'm uh, yeah. extending my uh, That's answer. That's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> now, now, Americans here, they...